there have been some huge battles for over over this year. I was wondering if you could give me a bit of a kind of a what's the state of the nation? <laughs> Small question. <laughs> The, the last few months, it feels that it's been a never-ending attack on trans rights. Um, whether it's the government, you know, delaying the the, the reforms of the Gender Recognition Act, so um, they're trying to not give us our right to self-identify, uh, or it's some famous famous celebrity on on Twitter or on social media trying to attack our rights by these really insidious little arguments. Um, it, it, it does feel that this year, that in 2020, that trans people have been used as a political punching bag. Um, and this has not been the case in previous years. So um, I really think that, that, that now is the time that, that, that allies of trans people and allies of the community really need to step up. Um, we, we have seen some amazing displays of allyship. I remember in, in 2018, uh, there was... Some issues with some anti-trans people uh, around London Pride and the reaction to that from allies was was we had hundreds literally hundreds of cisgender allies coming and offering to volunteer for trans pride to to be a steward on the march to try and keep us safe and I, I, I really think that 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 kind of reaction from from um, allies of the trans community is is what is going to save us and it's really um, our only hope at the moment because um, the, the government, the powers that be are not listening to actual trans people. So maybe if, if some cis people say the same things and enough say the same things, we could get actual progress. I mean, unfortunately, trans people are still being framed as a threat or a joke, which is uh, really unfortunate. And I feel that a lot of cis people get their information about trans people from other cisgender people, so people who are not trans. And I think that that's a really um, difficult situation because you're not going to get the truth, you're not going to get how people are actually feeling. And I think anybody who spends time with a trans person, you know, in real life or, or you know, um, bothers to get to know someone who's trans, they'll understand that trans issues really are, it's just a human rights issue. People just want to get on with their lives. We don't want special treatment, we just want to be treated with respect. Just today, they've put back GRA reform again. That's the reform of the Gender Recognition Act. So, you know, that is very much weighing on the minds of trans people. Um, it does feel a bit like we're in limbo. Um, obviously, we've had horrible political trouble in Poland as well. And so the fact that we haven't maybe had any headlines about the big organised Pride events means that we can actually look further afield as well and think about these sort of big problems which are still very much affecting LGBTQ people like right now. Absolutely. And I think you know, sticking with the GRA for, for a second, the fact that actually the, the majority of the British public, when surveyed, are supportive, yet that's not being reflected in the, in the political discourse. No, it's, I mean, it's frustrating. The only hope is that the further delay is because the leaked report that came from the government earlier this spring was largely protested. There were protests, again not a party but a protest although again i went on those marches in london and it felt like pride in some ways um and i think trans pride in brighton can still feel quite protesty as well and as well as being celebratory um and so in in a way although no we we haven't had the normal pride events that we would have the fact that i've marched twice on the capital this year for my rights did feel like the true essence of pride in a way to all people, how can people be better allies? What do you want them to do? My favourite display of allyship is 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 um, overt shows of support for the trans community that that, that we haven't asked for. <laughs> you know, uh, um, so like there was there was a time when when um, celebrities came out and were and stood out for trans rights. Nobody asked them to do that, and 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 all it took for them was to go onto their social media and say. I support trans rights. I think that they should have the right to self-identify. Um, so, you know, whatever that, that, that show of support may be, um, whether it be vocal, whether it be monetary, um, whether it be, um, you know, a, 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 a support of volunteering someone's time, um, as I, it feels really, really wearing down to, to have to ask for this support all the time and ask and ask and ask. And it's a really lovely, refreshing 
surprise when when I open up my my social media in the morning and I see that a celebrity has said actually I think trans people are people and we should give them the right to self-identify so um, other ways also please um, volunteer your time for Trans Pride Brighton we are always looking for skilled people who can help us develop the charity um, you can donate to uh, our Givy, which is givey.com slash transpridebrighton. Um, you can text uh, transpride to uh, 7085 to donate two pounds as well. Um, there's lots and lots of different ways. Um, and, and like I said, um, unexpected displays of support are the most powerful. When I spend time with young adults in schools. I always feel very, very optimistic and hopeful, um, especially if you've been spending too much time on Twitter or social media, I would say go and volunteer in a high school because these young people are so switched on. You know, they are able to look at political discourse from around the world and they have really strong opinions. You know, when, I mean, you don't need to look much further than Greta Thunberg for what some one sort of very mobilized teenager can do in changing the conversation around the world. And, you know, I, I was very fearful back in 2014 that my career would suffer when I came out as trans. But actually, kids are so understanding. Like, I remember going into schools really on and saying, OK, so this is what a trans person is. And they were like, like, we have, like, five trans kids in the school. <laughs> um, and I was like, OK, that's quite embarrassing. But um, they're, they're, in a way, they know way more than us. They're so ahead of us because they've grown up on the internet. They almost are plugged in to the internet in a way that we just weren't. And your book, This Book is Gay, has had a, a, a fundamental influence on a, I'm going to say, on a whole generation of, of people. How does that feel? It's mad. It is mad. I get the maddest fan mail from all around the world. Um, we, we constantly keep updating This Book is Gay because the conversation keeps evolving. I mean, when I first wrote that book in 2012, you know, the words non-binary were just not really in my vocabulary. I wasn't hearing them either. So just in the last eight years, you know, the conversation has very much moved on. Um, and so we do, we keep updating it but you know that book has sold half a million copies in America now it's it's a lot um and I can't think about it too much <laughs> because sometimes it feels like a huge responsibility mm. to, you know to be telling young people you know this is how to come out to your family I don't know those young people I don't know what their situation is so I can't really give advice I'm not a therapist but I hope I've kind of given them a bit of a road map so that if you know they're starting out on a journey they've at least got this book to go with them. I wanted to ask you both actually about your thoughts about resilience yeah, and, and how and self-care and how you manage that. So a really, really good point. And I'm glad you, you brought that up because, I mean, Sarah and I have been, um, you know, have dedicated maybe the past nine to ten years towards trans activism. And um, I, I think it's when people are first coming out, often they will get involved with things online or, the, or they'll be part of articles and I think it's a very tender time for people to be out there because you're dealing with your own stuff and you're having to deal with with other things that might come your way as well and although I've managed to, to build up a tougher skin over the years um, I don't feel that like people should necessarily have to do that um, but I, you know online there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of horrible people out there I think that what people will recognize is that um, when you know who you are um, there's, there's certain phrases and certain things that people can say that just will not affect you because you know exactly who you are. There's nothing new that people can say. They often say the same stuff over and over again. Trying to recognize those signs of stress, trying to make sure that you're looked after, particularly if you're at the start of your transition, um, just look after yourself because, yeah, because obviously we want people to, to feel, have good mental health and feel good about themselves. And we are all in this together. And there's a lot of support out there from various organizations, places like Trans Pride Brighton that offer that. Um, you know, we should be very proud of what we have set up so that people can be supported. But there was an organisation called All About Trans as well. So if you wanted to get in touch with them as well, if you wanted to do an interview, for example, they can provide guidance um, for you and the people interviewing you as well, which is important. Um, finally, I want to ask you both, what does pride mean to you? Uh, pride to me um, is, is um, this amazing opportunity to see other people who are just starting their journey. Pride is all about supporting those who are more vulnerable than us. And it's pride is a collective feeling. Brighton Pride, 
for me has been a vital part of me growing up and learning who I am and who I was going to be. Um, you know, I've had great love affairs that have lasted three days, never to speak to people ever again. I've met some amazing friends who have been my friends for 10, 15 years now. Um, I've had euphoric moments of love where, you know, I'll never forget me and my friend Matt Lister dancing to Years and Years a few years back and just thinking, this is the happiest I have ever been and ever will be. You know, just one of those pure, amazing moments. And I'm sure there will be many, many more to come in future years as well.